hey what's up youtube your boy chris this is gonna be an installation video of my corbin fire and ice seat that i purchased for my honda goldwing one of the reasons why i went with the corbin is because i was able to build the seat right on their website i didn't have to wait on any samples from corbin i was able to do everything right on their website i will include a link in the description of the video of where i purchased my corbin seat for my 21 honda goldwing i decided to go with the corbin fire and ice because it came with a switch that allows the seat to heat as well as to cool it came with the seat the backrest and it came with the passenger backrest so stay tuned to this video and i'm going to show you how i installed it on my 21 honda goldwing so let's get started shadowy flight into the dangerous world of a man who is fearless. A young loner on a crusade to champion the cause in a world of reckless automobiles. These are my motor vlogs. The first step of the installation is removing the Honda Goldwing OEM original seat. If you would like to see a step-by-step -step video on how to remove the Honda Goldwing original OEM seat, click on my video link in the top corner. Now that I have the seat removed from the Honda Goldwing, now I can work on removing the passenger backrest. To remove the passenger backrest, I started removing the bolts that hold the passenger armrest. After removing the two fillet bolts, I was then able to remove the brackets and slip out the passenger armrest. I repeated the exact same removal steps on the right and left of the passenger armrest on both sides. This camera angle gives you a better view of removing the passenger armrest. This applies to the right and to the left side. I started removing the Phillips screws located in the back of the trunk. I have a total of six Phillips screws. Two are near the lower hinges on both sides. And you also have two just above the lower hinges. After removing a total of six Phillips screws, I was then able to lift up on the passenger backrest to unplug the passenger backrest seat heater. To remove the plastic panel near the passenger backrest, I removed two Phillips screws inside of the trunk. So this is not in the directions, but I'm gonna take these two screws out and I'm gonna use them to secure the uh, backrest to the top of the trunk lid. So I'm just going to take these two screws out. I'm using I'm using a four millimeter to take these two screws out. This is also not in the directions. You see where you got another screw here and another screw here. So apparently these are gonna come out and we're gonna fit these spacers. If they detach, we're gonna set them over into the holes on top of the trunk lid. And then we're gonna put the screws up through the trunk lid. And this is gonna secure the, the uh, passenger backrest uh, to the motorcycle. This is not in the directions, but I can kind of figure out how it goes.
A good installer must always be prepared to improvise and figure things out even without directions. So I'm going to take this spacer, I'm going to drop it over into the third slot on the farthest corner. And now I can take the passenger backrest and sit it on top of these slots. I'm going to put back the longest screw back into those spots where I took out the bolts. So on the back of the passenger backrest, where I took out the bolts and put in the spacers, I got one on each corner, one here, one here, and then I have a bolt here, a bolt here. So it's a total of four. The shorter screws go in the top two. The longer screws go between the spacer, here and here. And so this is not in directions, but just looking at how the Passenger back breast is made. I can pretty much tell that this is the way that this passenger back rest goes on or bolts on to the bike. And now I'm going to feed the passenger backrest wiring down the side of the backrest. So this wire that comes off of the passenger backrest is going to plug into the back side of the, the seat. So now that I have the passenger backrest mounted, I have the wire coming out of the bottom. We're going to work on getting the Corbin seat put on the Honda Goldwing. Located at the back of the Corbin seat is the plug for the passenger backrest. Once I lay the Corbin seat on the Honda Goldwing, I can then work on plugging in the passenger backrest into the back of the Corbin seat. The Corbin seat does not plug into the original harness that came from Honda. The Corbin seat has its own provided 12 volt DC power cable. I routed the wiring from the Corbin seat along the battery down to the side of the Honda Goldwing. I then used the original bolts that came out of the OEM seat. I used the two bolts to secure the Corbin seat to the Honda Goldwing. You can use the provided bolts that came with the Corbin seat, but I decided to go back with the original bolts that came on the Honda Goldwing. Repeat the exact same steps on the right and the left side of the Corbin seat. 
So now that I have the Corbin seat installed on the 2100 Goldwing, in this portion of the video, I'm going to be wiring up the switch for the heated seat. So when you purchase the Corbin seat, it's going to come with its own wiring and it's going to have these little ring terminals on the connector. And basically you're going to tie into the terminal side, the key terminal side of the fuse box. And it's on a 10 amp fuse. So when you turn on the switch, it's going to send power through the wiring, through the harness, and then you can turn on your fire and ice uh, seat heater. When you turn off the bike, it's going to kill the power on this terminal and you're not going to be able to turn on the seat heater unless the bike is on. So looking at the panel that goes over the fuse box, it's actually a 10 amp accessory fuse. So since I already have uh, some accessories tied into the accessory side, I'm going to be getting my power from another source. But normally how you hook this up, you're just going to take these ring terminals. You're going to go into the fuse box. You're going to hook one to the positive and one to the negative. And when you turn on the key, it's going to send power through the harness to turn on the switch. So basically how I plan to hook up my Corbin seat, I'm going to be taking the ring terminals on the 7.5 fuse and I'm going to be connecting up to my, my isolation fuse block and I'm going to be connecting up to my 10 amp side. And also on the Corbin seat, remember it has that 7.5 fuse in line. So I can't uh, pull more than 7.5 oil to blow the the fuse so how I'm gonna hook this up I'm gonna be connecting up a quick connect and this way I can always uh, disconnect the seat heater without having to uh, cut the wires so I'm gonna hook up one end to the key switch and it's gonna plug in like so and that's gonna be my power if I want to remove the seat then all I have to do is just unplug it so one of the first things I need to do is drill a hole through the saddlebag where I could run this uh, harness and then we're going to get it connected to the isolation fuse block I want to make that hole big enough to run this plug through. Now I can take my connector run it through like so and I can take some wire loom or I could take some silicone and just plug this hole back so I don't get any moisture or water uh, through this hole okay now I'm gonna take off the negative And I'm going to take off the positive. Do the same. slide down this little butt connector
and I'm just going to heat this up and it's going to shrink and it's going to create an airtight seal. That's the thing I like about these little connectors. They're very convenient. You don't have to worry about using electrical tape. And you want to just melt that little metal. Okay, now we can do the negative side. I will include a link in the video where you guys can pick up some of these solder and seal wire connectors that I'm using. They're very convenient. If you notice one end is flared bigger than the smaller side and this is going to be where you uh, connect the wiring. So I'm going to slide down the smaller end. Twist those wires together like so. I'm going to lay them horizontally and then I'm going to slide up the fatter end over the wiring and I'm going to stop right in the center. And the good thing about this, you can use a heat gun, you can use a uh, a cigarette lighter or any type of heat that you have readily available I like to use flames because it's just faster and that's going to create an airtight seal and now I'm going to slide my connector through the hole that I just made it up through Now that I have, so now I have the connector through. I'm going to take my other end that's going to plug in like so. I'm going to plug this into my isolation fuse block on the 10 amp side. Just trying to make this wire just a little bit small. That screw hole is so tiny. To get it And now I'm going to turn on the bike and I want to verify that the Corbin seat actually comes on before I put back the plate and put everything back. So I'm going to make sure the switch is off. That's on. That's off. That's heat. Make sure the switch is off. I'm going to turn on the bike. 
and if everything is connected properly this should light up so here we go turn it on the switch should light up that's heat that's off that's cool and I can actually hear the fans inside of the seat coming on turn the switch off Now that I verified that the seat is connected properly, and now I can go ahead and work on just kind of cleaning everything up and putting back the side panel. This is going to conclude the install of the Corbin Fire and Ice seat on my 21 Honda Goldwing. Keep in mind that the Corbin Fire and Ice seat has its own power connector that plugs directly to the fuse box. When you disconnect the original OEM seat from the Honda Goldwing, you're going to have lights flashing on the dash. You're going to have the heated seats and you're going to have the heated grip lights flashing on the dash so to trick the hunter gold wing into thinking that the original seat is plugged up i bought the heated seat dummy or seat dummy from electrical connection i will include a link in the description of the video of where you can pick up the seat dummy from electrical connection and it'll plug directly into the the harness of the hunter gold wing and it'll trick the Honda Goldwing into thinking that it's plugged into the OEM seat. You can ride around without the seat dummy connected, but you're going to have your heated seats lights flashing on the dash, and you're going to have the heated grip lights flashing on the dash. So I will include a link in the description, or you can pick up the heated seat dummy into tricking the Honda Goldwing into thinking it's plugged into the original OEM Honda seat. But so far, I like the way everything turned out. I love the way the colors are flowing. I love the stitching. I love the quality of the Corbin seat. It actually matches the paint perfectly. So I did a good job on that straight off their website. I will include in the description of the video of where you guys can pick up the Corbin seat for the newer style Honda Goldwing. I will do a later video of letting you guys know what I think about the Corbin seat and just giving you my honest review. Well, this is going to conclude the install. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like this video, be sure to click the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is your boy, Chris, just showing you the Corbin seat installation on my 21 Honda Goldwing. And I will talk to you guys later. See you.